Yeah. I'm not, oh. I didn't know I was empty. My fastest float away are 100 round mag. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. Okay, on the timer, ready? Five oh five to dump 16 rounds. Another 16 round dump on the buzzer, are you ready? Ready. Nice. 3.75. You were right. I took three <laughs> seconds. You're Last right. Time it was 505. Good job, honey. 3.75 that time. Oh yeah. <laughs> now let's do two reload two. All right. 5.27. Can do better. You think you can do better? Yeah. All Let's right. just do one reload one. Okay. Actually, let's see how fast I can shoot five. All right, on the buzzer. One point three seven. That's my fastest time ever. Nice. <laughs> a piece of brass too fell on me. A piece of brass fell on you? Yeah. What do you think of that gun so far? I love it. First we're going to start off with CCI Subsonic. Now we're going with CCI Standard Velocity. Now we're 
we're going with Aguila Super Extra. Standard velocity. Standard velocity? Yeah, it's Aguila Super Extra Standard Velocity. Alright, so that was all the subsonic loads we have for this, and they run great through it. Yeah. Good. Here's a reload.
the Caltech P17. <laughs> so, first thing about this gun, if if you have a child shooter who you think might be getting ready for a semi-automatic pistol, but you're not really sure, and you kind of want you you want to get them a pistol, but you don't want to spend a bunch of money, this this is the gun to go find. This thing. When it comes to just simple ease of use, lightweight, the slide, it, the slide is so easy to operate. Go ahead and, and move the slide. You can see how easy that slide is to move, manipulate. MSRP on these guys is 200 bucks. And I don't know what they're really going for uh, street price, but it's probably less than that. But even if it's 200 bucks, so that's, that's such a good deal for a 16, 16 shot, 22 pistol. And it comes with three of these 16 round mags. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, um, just to compare it, I brought out the Glock 44. And uh, the Glock 44 is a 10 shot. And compared to the Glock, the, the Keltec is a much better handgun. The Keltec has a 16 shot capacity as opposed to the 10 shot of the Glock. And the Glock. This might be an intentional training thing, but the Glock slide full weight is the same as a Glock 19. Yeah, it is. It's harder to use, but the the upside to that, and I talked about this in our Glock 19, in our Glock 44 review, is if you have a 19 or if you have a 44 and going to get a 19, if you can use this, it's going to be exactly the same. But only the 10 shot capacity and the much thicker grip. The Keltec's the winner here, easily. The, the gun I can compare this to most that we have on hand is the uh, 43X as far as size goes. The Glock 43X and the Keltec P17 are very similar in both width and length and, and uh, the height of the two. They're very, very similar. So if you've ever handled a 43X or have a 43X, they're basically the same size. Now the 43X is a lot heavier. Yeah. This P17 is is just a great beginner's gun. Great children's, youth, new shooter, beginner's gun for 200 bucks or less. Uh, this is actually the second P17 we had though. The first one that we got from Keltec ran great. Um, and we put 400 rounds through it or so and it was it was running everything except for Winchester M22. Yeah. Like it would it would you could chamber the first shot, but then every single shot you would have to clear a stovepipe with Winchester M22. And we tried that with several different boxes, so it's like several different lots bought over a long time. It just it just has an issue with M22. I don't know exactly what it is, but it just doesn't work with it. So, but after about 400 rounds of all other ammo working great, um, the first P17 we had, the slide stopped locking open. Like you, you couldn't even lock it open manually by pushing up on the slide catch and doing that. You, you couldn't make it do it. Something, something broke or wore out with the slide, with the slide stop mechanism. So, I took it back to Caltech, and the, the fellow there replaced the mechanism in there and then after that the gun wouldn't work at all it just you couldn't get through a mag with any ammo mm -hmm. so and we tried a lot of different rounds through it it was it was pretty frustrating uh, but so then we got this this p17 and I heard back from my contact at Caltech that that that's it, that range of serial number should have never even left the place and um, they, they, that, that range of serial number was known to have issues so it was an accident that we even got it but that's how it goes with getting TNE guns sometimes things like that happen but so then we got a brand new uh, you know latest model of the P17 right off the line and uh, this thing's just been a hoot to shoot it's, it's really really fun now it hasn't been perfect though we did have some malfunctions with it um, especially with the M22 ammo, it's just not going to work with that. And uh, but shooting subsonic with the suppressor is a lot of fun. It, it shoots really good. 
in order to uh, put the suppressor on you do have to swap out they include this little wrench you remove this thread protector yep. and then there's a thread adapter you'll need to use which I already have in our can here this is one of our form one cans and then you can just screw that screw that guy right on there and then uh, makes your package even funner so more fun even more fun even more funner <laughs> so that's really what it sounds like this is this is the cheapest suppressed build that I can think you could ever put together this is a form one can this can was a, a fuel filter that we converted with a form one and it was 20 bucks and the p17 was 200 bucks and then the tax stamp for the form one was 200 so you're looking at a 420 dollar suppressed package here and i don't i don't think it, you can go any cheaper than that that's mm -hmm. like a, a lot of suppressors themselves cost 420 dollars plus the tax stamp so this is a great little gun if you want to get into that game with and not really have to worry about breaking anything yeah. with your form one or whatever if you're not sure of yourself so but one thing though with this p17 this has because it has such a, a light slide easy to move slide yeah when if you if you have a suppressor on this gun and you run supersonic ammo it peppers your face yeah this slide opens way too fast i think it's opening early because of the extra pressure from the suppressor and you get a lot of blowback on the face it's very uncomfortable after one or two shots you're going to be done with that yeah. but with subsonic ammo i mean that's what you want to be using with a suppressor anyway because it's quieter with subsonic ammo this gun there's no problem it, it runs really good in, in one day, we put over 400 rounds through this gun, subsonic ammo, four different brands. We did the CCI standard velocity, Aguila standard velocity, CCI subsonic, and Aguila subsonic. And we only had just a couple of malfunctions, and it was a lot of, that was a really fun day of shooting. Oh, yeah. Nice and quiet, you don't need earmuffs. It's a good time. Yep. So, Keep that in mind if you're thinking about getting a P17 and putting a can on it. Just stock up on subsonics or Definitely. it's not going to be fun. And that was with both of the P17s we had did that blowback in the face thing. Yeah. Takedown of this is really super simple. Um, all you got to do, there's two little tabs right here. And you'll just pinch and pull those down. It's very similar to taking down a Glock. And you'll pull those down and pull back on the slide and lift up. Now there's a little ring that, that will come out with the slide and right here's that little ring so you just gotta watch you don't lose that and then that's a field strip right there. One thing about this gun um, it stays really clean. Oh, I, yeah. I don't know if it's because of the way that it, the slide is so open on both sides and it's kinda throwing the dirt away but it stays really clean. It's yeah. it's not a gun you really have to uh, be all over with keeping it clean. There's there's a few hundred or maybe a thousand rounds through this gun since the last time we cleaned it, and it's yeah. there's I mean it, it's really not that dirty. Yeah. And then I'm going to put the thread protector back on it. So it's a bit of a pain. It's not quite as convenient as having a regular just threaded barrel because you do have to mess with the adapter on there. I'm going to tighten that. Can't find where the wrench is. All right, um, another thing you might not know about the P17 is there's actually a new generation of magazine for these. Um, the gun's going to ship with three of these first-gen mags, from what I'm hearing from Keltec. Um, and this just has a conventional coil spring in it. I'll just take this, I'll just take this apart real quick. So this is one of the first-gen mags. And 
and it has just a regular old traditional coil spring in it. Now I'll take apart one of the second gen mags. I don't know if these are available yet, but I know they're going to be. And if you're having problems with your P17 at all, this is going to be a great way to fix it. These have these second gen mags. They have a die cut spring in. I see the, you difference. See the difference there. This one's wider in. Yeah, this one's just a spiraled wire, and this one's a die cut wire, die cut spring. It's not even a wire. That's die cut from from some plate material. So when when we switched over to this this new die cut spring. The, the number of malfunctions that we had with some of the higher, hotter velocity ammo, like the Aguila Super Extra, the 40 grainers, that's a pretty hot round. The, uh, the CCI Mini Mags is a pretty hot round. It seems like these one of these die cut springs is almost mandatory for those rounds to work right. Mm -hmm. Just, I think it all comes down to this slide, how easy it is to move. It comes open so fast, and I don't think the conventional spring can keep up with some of the hotter ammo. That's just speculation on my part, though. But it seems to seems to make sense. So, if you have a P17 and you're shooting some of that hotter ammo and having trouble, contact Keltec. They might be able to hook you up with some of these die cut mags. They might do a warranty replacement of your old mags. I don't know how it's going to work. I'm just uh, just letting you know they exist. So, but they there was a marked improvement with the hotter ammo when we used the die cut die cut springs. If you're using subsonics with a can and things like that, those the, the regular springs though it's going to be just fine. So let's talk about a few things that we like the most about it. It's very lightweight. Yeah, sure is. Yeah. Very lightweight. I bet I could hold it up with my pinky. The when compared to the Glock 44, which is also a very lightweight gun. They feel the same. Weight is the same, but you compare it to the 43X, which is most comparable in size. That the 43X is much, much heavier than the than the P17. I like the sights. I think that they did an outstanding job with these sights for a $200 gun. They are plastic sights, but they're shaped really well just the size of the front post and the size of the rear notch work out really well together the front post does have a uh, fiber optic insert in it a green fiber optic insert so it just the sight picture itself works really well for me and I'm really glad that the sights are so nice on this gun and a lot of the Caltech guns have really good sights on them I know they're plastic but just they do a really good job of engineering the dimensions of the the post and the notch and how it, how that all works for you really well done the magazine release isn't like a typical push button it's got this toggle right behind the trigger guard and you can actuate it with either your thumb or your trigger finger or if you're left-handed it would work just the same but it works really well and the mags let's put a mag back together here Works really well, and the magazines eject really well. That's an empty mag, and they pop right out. You want to show them? Yeah, just like that. All right. What are some things you don't like about this gun? Well, M22 is almost my favorite round, and it jams up with that round. Yeah, the the whole M22 thing is is funny. It should be working fine, and it doesn't. <laughs> I don't know why. And uh, there's another YouTuber I saw, and his his P17 had issues with the M22 also. So uh, M22 was really available in our area for a while, and we have a lot of it. So it's unfortunate that this gun doesn't work with it. But you know, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Um, but you got a lot of other stuff that does work. Yeah, yeah, there's plenty of other ammo out there that does yeah. work. So, it's not a big deal. Here's another thing I don't really like about the other one. There, there's a lot of jams with it. Yeah, the other one, whenever 
whenever we got over that 400 round mark, it wasn't locking open, and something went wrong with it, and it just it just didn't work at all. But that was a serial number that wasn't supposed yeah. to go out. Yeah, that was, mm -hmm. I mean, according to Caltech, we should have never even got that gun. It was a bit of a shipping department issue. Yeah. So, so, so they knew of the issue. Yeah, yeah. I don't think any guns that are out on the street for sale are going to have those same issues. Yeah. But it's something that happened to us, so we're bringing it up. You know, I when I watch when I watch YouTube videos, it's often because I want to go buy a gun, so I want to know everything that a that a reviewer went through. You know, and while Keltec did provide these guns for us to do the reviews, that's all they are. They're just TNE guns, and I I'm just I'm trying to be as real as possible with it. It's not a perfect gun in the reliability department. With these new mags, though, it's pretty darn good for a $200 gun. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, yeah, it's tough to beat. So, you got anything else you want to say about it? Nope. This is a great gun, everybody. For 200 bucks, I don't think you can get any better for for a child's gun that you're not... It's their first gun, you're not sure if they're going to really get into it, you don't want to spend too much money. This is a great option. Mm -hmm. And they are, I, they are out there. There's one in the local gun shop here in Covington that uh, they have one. Oh. There. Yeah. I should have, I should have checked the price out on it, but I didn't. But even if it's MSRP, 200 bucks, you can't beat it. For you get three 16 round mags. You buy a Glock 44, it's going to cost you 360 bucks, and you're going to get two 10 round mags. Yeah. And you'll have to pay extra for a threaded barrel. Yeah. This gun comes with a threaded barrel. Yeah. And okay. three 16 round mags. We've had this this gun or these guns for a long time and oh, yeah. we've put multiple thousands of rounds <laughs> through P17s over the past three months, oh, I'd yeah. say. Do you want to say bye? Oh, yeah. Okay. Thanks for watching on Starman Wheels. See you next time. Okay, we're about 400 rounds into this review with the Kiltec P17, and we're experiencing a failure with the slide hold open. This lever right here. What's happening is it's locking open on an empty mag, but sometimes when you take the mag out, it drops forward. So let's try that again. I'm going to lock it open on an empty mag, and it stayed open that time. Locked open on an empty. So let's try it. I'm just going to manually lock the slide back. I'm just going to push up on the slide catch. And it's just not, the slide catch is not engaging. So there's, there's no way to manually lock this gun open anymore at this point. And it sometimes doesn't stay locked open when you take the mag out. So it did there. Lock it open on empty. Yeah. So it's working. It's working more or less with the. Uh, there it dropped when I took that mag out. So it's working pretty often with the. Um, with the mag locking open. There it dropped forward when I took the mag out again. But there's no way to lock this open anymore manually. I'm pushing up on the slide catch. And it's uh, not working. Ready? It's gonna go full auto. Didn't lock open? You're empty, I counted them. Just didn't lock open. Why does it keep doing that? Yeah, I don't know. You're not empty. Chamber it. Chamber another one. Empty. Oh, that was empty. Okay, I miscounted whenever I was loading the mags. I guess. <laughs> Probably. Oh, remember that guy was like this. Now those were single shots. Now I'm gonna go fully semi-auto.
Oh, that was your last shot. <laughs> Holy poop auto. Yeah. Poop auto. Go ahead. <laughs> Can you do that for the thumbnail? Yeah, sure. Two. Fill this one up with two. Okay. Re shoot two. Reload. Shoot two. Okay. That'd be good. That'd be a good drill. Okay, I'm gonna buy oh whoop, oh, wait. <laughs> I hear cows. Yeah you do. Okay, on the buzzer. Stovepipe. This time. <laughs> All right, here we go. Please no malfunctions. Come finishing this mag. You've got a malfunction there. Oops. Pull the mag out. I thought that was empty. <laughs> I thought it was empty. There you go. Put that mag back in. Let's see what we got. Now completely finishing the mag. <laughs> Seriously? Oof, look at that. Kind of a funky uh, stovepipe looking thing. Let me tell you something. Okay. Remember with the other P-17? Yeah. It would do the exact same thing. Yeah, you're right. Is that Does that mag have a yellow dot on the bottom? No. Okay. All right. I think that one doesn't either. No, this one doesn't either. So let's uh, let's reload some yellow dot mags and try them out. Definitely. All right, so we've got some mags here that have the upgraded springs in them, indicated for us by the yellow dots on the bottom. So let's try these out. You got a chamber around first. Oops. There you go. Now we're ready. <laughs> In a whole mag? Yep. No. Not I must have only put 12 in that mag because that was 12 shots, but it did lock open on empty. So I must have miscounted. All right, so here's another one that has the yellow dot. Yep. There it was. 16 shots locked open on empty. So that's with the die cut spring in them. Let's load up a couple more mags and try that out. Okay, here we go with the die cut mags, the die cut spring mags. One more time. Let's try these out. Locked open on the empty. Here you I go. And tell they're very smoky. Yeah. <laughs> All the ammo we're using is yeah. pretty smoky. There we go. So. I think all of our problems with the P-17 so far have just been those mags. Yeah. As long as we use the mags with the die cut springs in them, yeah, we're, uh, we're good to go. Yeah. So let's go kill a tech to make some more die cut spring ones. Yeah, definitely. Good Hello test. Monster.